So welcome to today's video. This is on atheism and why this is a death cult. There will be also in the description below a link to a site where you can find more answers about God and arguments against atheism and the belief that the world evolved from a big bang etc. Okay so my first point would be atheists believe that nothing created everything which to me is illogical. Secondly, why are they trying to hate and disprove on a God that they don't believe in? If they say they're atheists, they don't believe there's a God, right? So why are they trying to disprove and hate on him? Could it be a deeper reason for this? So biblically, the Bible says that people who are trying to disprove God, who are rejecting Jesus, are those who are sinners who don't want to hear that they're sinners and they don't want to admit that they have sinned against God. So they'd rather disprove God and almost hide from God, like Adam and Eve in the garden, and when they knew they'd done wrong, then actually come out to the light and have their deeds exposed, repent um, and turn to Jesus. In fact, when I say exposed, I mean privately between them and God, um, confess their sin and be forgiven by him. So they choose not to do this, but rather fight against God which in the end is not good for anyone. Um, and we're all going to come before God for judgment. So we'd rather be on the side of God than his enemy, believe me. So the first thing to think about is what does the Bible actually say about heaven and the way into heaven? So first of all, you need to have your name in the Lamb's Book of Life to get into heaven. So how do we get our name in the Lamb's Book of Life? Jesus says that it is a very narrow way into heaven. And he also said that he is the way, the truth and the life, and no man come to the Father but by him. So to get in, the Bible says as well, Enter ye in the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many are they that go therein thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and a few are they that find it. So <clears throat> what Jesus was saying then, as this is written in red, we know it's Jesus speaking, was that basically there's so many things in the world to take us away from God, like man, sin, the devil, the ways of the world, um, the flesh, our body's desires to sin against God, and to deceive ourselves, our own hearts would as well. So we have many enemies against us, but Jesus knew this when he came to the earth and died for us. He knew what it was like to live in the body of flesh and knows the struggles that we go through. So Jesus was the, was the perfect person to die for us on the cross because he had experienced the struggles that we go through and loves us even though we sinned against him and caused all these issues to start with, the death a wage of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, basically, if you look at an atheist reason, they say that there is no God, but yet, if you look at actual atheist sites, they're very busy hating on God. So, that leads me to conclude that the enemy, the devil, is using them, basically, as puppets to hate God and to... Um, to draw others away from finding the truth, the narrow way through Jesus Christ, um, which is life and saves us. Um, we've all sinned, we've all broken the Ten Commandments and we all deserve hell. That's the truth, we do. Our pride and our nature will say otherwise, but we all do and we all know we have. If you've lied, stolen or coveted or committed adultery, even by looking at lust at someone is committing adultery with them in your heart. So none of us can escape the fact that we have all sinned. So the cure for this is the death of Jesus Christ on the cross and the payment he paid for us there and he rose again as well victorious and to believe and trust in what Jesus did on the cross is what saves us that Jesus died we repent of our sin we acknowledge we're sinners we say to the Lord God we're sorry we know we sinned against him so we turn from that and we accept and believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of our sins and he also died for the whole mankind so all lives matter everybody matters to Jesus because he died for everybody and he wants no one to end up in hell so um, when Jesus was on the earth, he never argued with people, like really argued with people. He gave them truthful replies and truthful facts. And after this, he went, his own, he went off again to the next group of people he needed to speak to. And he did the will of his father in heaven. So for those people who challenge Christians, the are atheists who challenge Christians, they're actually um, doing the same as people back in the day of Jesus. They're looking to try to destroy um, the truth from God. They're trying to um, make him look stupid, you know, but in the end they end up looking fools themselves 
uh, when the wisdom and truth of God is revealed, that they will be very much so sad and sorry that they didn't listen to wise people or to the Lord. So a man who listens to the truth is wise, and a man who doesn't listen to the truth is a fool. A man who doesn't want to hear good understanding is a fool. So they're proving themselves to be fools, sadly, by not listening. If you really want to know who God is and about God, then you would genuinely listen to the both sides of the argument and look into it more, rather than mocking believers who share with you the answers. Um, you've got to think what spirit is behind the person when they say these things. It's not a spirit from God, and there are many evil spirits that will come against the Lord um, through people and um, through Christ to Christians as well, at Christians, through um, on non-believers. Um, so basically, as a Christian, all we can do is share the truth and warn people in love, because there are many times when we will get the opportunity to tell them about Jesus and we need to take every opportunity to warn people in love and give them the truthful answers. If we don't, I would be worried that their lifeblood, I would say their blood would be on my hands. If I didn't warn someone about Jesus, I would feel bad and I wouldn't feel great before the Lord if I had let someone you know, lie to someone or said, no, I'm not going to tell that person about Jesus and ignored them. That would be worse, I think. And if we want to be right with the Lord and be rewarded, we should be honest and open with people and give account for what hope is in us, as the Bible says. Be ready at any time to give account for the hope that was in you, within you. So I would say also that um, atheism is very into materialism. There's no spiritualism in, well, I say spiritualism, there's no spiritual life in them. As in, they're not looking for a spiritual side. They're looking for the material side of the temporary stuff. They're not looking for the actual soul. Where could the soul go, the person? They, they just think you're just, like, you know, made for nothing. But you're made for a purpose by God. We're all made for a purpose by God. We're here not by chance. And... Um, even those people who say they don't know or they don't believe in God, um, those people also are hating God because they're rejecting the very obvious points that God has given them air and life and love and everything they have. They're rejecting all of it. Um, this is very sad. Um, and the fool says in his heart, there is no God, the Bible says. So we all know we have a conscience and we all have to, um, in this world, uh, follow our conscience if if I went and stole something from someone I'd feel really bad and I know it would bother me so if you're ignoring your conscience you're becoming hard-hearted and reprobate and that's not a good place to be so rather we be convicted and get right with God now than be condemned after this life and end up where we rightly deserve for sinning against a just God he is the judge of all man and we will all stand before him and we will all be judged and those who have accepted Jesus will have an attorney on their side and an advocate standing by them. Those who haven't will be on their own to give account of how good they think they are before God. And I wouldn't want to be in that place because personally, I know I've sinned and I know what's in my heart. So I wouldn't want to be standing before God and have to give account for everything I've done. I'd rather ha confess it now, be forgiven and stand under the judgment of being judged for how I've lived for, for God rather than against God. So just some food for thought there for any atheists who are interested in finding out about God. There's still hope. There's still an afterlife. There is still a heaven and a hell. So it's a choice between where you want to go. 